The decisive weeks in the history of mankind have arrived. The wave of enthusiasm over the establishment of a Soviet Republic in Hungary had hardly passed when the proletariat of Bavaria got possession of power and extended the hand of brotherly union to the Russian and Hungarian republics. The workmen of Germany and Austria are hurrying in hundreds of thousands and hundreds of thousands to Budapest, where they enter the ranks of the Red Army. The movement of the German proletariat, temporarily interrupted, again burst forth with ever-increasing strength. Coal miners, metal workers, and textile workers are sending brotherly greetings to the victorious Hungarian Republic in demand of the German Soviets a complete change of front. That is a break with imperialists, their own, the English, French, and American, in the forming of a close union with Russia and Hungary. There is no doubt that this movement will be given a still more powerful swing by the victory of the proletariat in Bavaria, the Soviet government of which has broken all ties with the oppressors of Berlin and Weimar with Ebert and Schiedemann. The servants of German imperialism, the murderers of Liebknecht, L-I-E-B-K-N-E-C-H-T, and Rosa Luxemburg. In Warsaw, which the Allied imperialists tried to make the center for the attack on Soviet Russia, the Polish proletariat, rises in its full stature and through the Warsaw Soviet of Workmen's Deputies sends greetings to the Hungarian Soviet Republic. The French Minister of Foreign Affairs, Pishan, the sworn enemy of the Russian Revolution, reports in Parliament on the sad state of affairs. Odessa is being evacuated. This was before the occupation of Odessa by Soviet troops. The Bolsheviks are penetrating the Crimean Peninsula. The situation in the north is not favorable. Things are not going well. The Greek soldiers landed on the shores of Crimea, according to the reports of Allied diplomats and newspapermen were mounted on Crimean donkeys, but the donkeys were not able to arrive in time at the Perikop Isthmus. Things are not going well. Evidently, even donkeys have begun to shake off the imperialistic harness. Foreign consuls do not wish to leave the Ukraine and urge their governments to recognize the Ukrainian Republic. Woodrow Wilson, the American president, sent to Budapest not troops of occupation to overthrow the Soviet Republic, but the honey-tongued General Smuts to negotiate with the Hungarian Council of People's Commissaries. Woodrow Wilson has definitely changed front and evidently has forced France to give up all hope of an armed crusade against Soviet Russia. War with Soviet Russia, which was demanded by the senseless French general Foch, F-O-C-H, would take 10 years in the opinion of the American statesman. Less than six months have passed since the decisive victory of the Allies over the Central Empires. Six months ago, it seemed that the power of the Anglo-French and American imperialism was without limits. At the time, all the Russian counter-revolutionarists had no doubt that the days of the Soviet Republic were numbered but events now move steadfastly along the Soviet road. The working masses of the whole world are joining the flag of the Soviet authority. And the world robbers of imperialism are being betrayed even by the Crimean donkeys. At the present moment, one awaits from day to day the victory of the Soviet Republic in Austria and in Germany. It is not impossible that the proletariat of Italy and Poland or France will violate the logical order and out strip the working class in other countries. These spring months become the decisive months in the history of Europe. At the same time, the spring will decide definitively the fate of the bourgeoisie and rich peasant anti-Soviet Russia. In the East, Kolchak has mobilized all his forces, has thrown in all his reserves, for he knows definitely that if he does not win immediately, then he will never win. Spring has come, the spring that decides. Of course, the partial victories of Kolchak are insignificant in comparison with the general conquest of Soviet authority in Russia and in the whole world. What does the temporary loss of Ufa, Ufa, Ufa mean in the face of the occupation of Odessa, the movement into the Crimea, and especially the establishment of the Bavarian Soviet Republic? What does the evacuation of Bellaby caused by military considerations mean in the face of the powerful growth of the proletarian re revolution in Poland? And in Italy, nevertheless, it would be criminal 
frivi frivolity on our part to disregard the danger represented by the white guardus bands of cold check on the east. Only stubbornness, steadfastness, watchfulness, and courage in the military struggle have guaranteed till now to the Russian Soviet Republic its international success. The Victorian, uh, the victorious struggle of the Red Army in all fronts aroused the spirit of the European working class and has made possible the establishment and strengthening first of the Hungarian and then of the Bavarian Republic. Our work has not yet been completed. The bands of Denikin have not been de definitive, uh, de definitively defeated. The bands of Kolchak continue to move towards the Volga. Spring has come. The spring that decides our strength is increased tenfold by the consciousness of the fact that the wireless stations of Moscow, Kiev, Budapest, and Munich not only exchange brotherly greetings but business agreements respecting common defensive struggle. But at home on our own territory, we must direct the main portion of our increased strength against the most dangerous enemy, against the Kolchak bands, our comrades of the Volga district are well aware of this in the province of Samara all Soviet institutions have been put on a war footing and the best forces have been diverted to support the army to form reserve regiments to carry on agitation of an educational character in the ranks of the Red Army Party Soviet and trade union organizations and Sizran have unanimously responded to the appeal of the Central Authority to support the Eastern Front. A special shock regiment is being organized from the workmen and popular elements, which only recently were groaning under the heel of the White Guardist. The Volga district is becoming the center of attention of all Soviet Russia. To carry out our international duty, we must first of all break up the bands of Kolchak in order to support the victorious workmen of Hungary and Bavaria in order to assist the uprising of workmen in Poland, Germany, and all of Europe, we must establish definitively and irrefutably the Soviet authority over the whole extent of Russia to the Urals. This is the slogan of the Red Army and of the whole Soviet country. The Urals will be the last stage in this bitter struggle. Victory in the Urals not only will give grain to the famished country and cotton to the textile industries, but will secure finally the well-earned rest of our heroic Red Army. So they mentioned Kiev, mentioned Volga, Crimea. Spring has come. Our strength has increased tenfold by the consciousness at the wireless station. So Kiev and Munich and Budapest and Moscow were all communicating. Budapest, of course, is the capital of, and then Munich, uh, capital of Germany, Kiev, capital of Ukraine, Moscow, capital of Russia. Budapest, of course, capital of, was it Istanbul? Serbia, well, well, Budapest, Volga, Volga River, isn't that where the uh, Moscow goes, uh, is on the Volga River? Anyways, there's another part, the Ukrainian Republic, foreign consuls do not wish to live the Ukraine, do not wish to leave the Ukraine and urge their governments to recognize the Ukrainian Republic. And there you go. That's some Trotsky.